Welcome to The Walkie Talkies by Michelle Baharia. Part 5. That's My Bus Story. A multimedia piece to enjoy from the comfort of your home or experiment and download to your phone to listen to in the park or even on a bus. Hold, Hold tight. tight! Hold, Hold tight. tight! Hold tight! No, I haven't. I haven't met anybody on the bus that I fell off, I fell in love with. But I know a friend that she met her husband at the time. She was a, he was a bus driver and she was coming from a night out. And she met him on the bus. Quite late. It was like 11 at night. And I got on, I'll never forget this, I got on a 13 bus to take me to Finchley Road Station and I didn't have any change. So I'd gone from 10, this is one, this is my next memorable journey that I can think of now. Got on the bus, I was sitting downstairs and when the conductor came to get my fare, so was I 14? No, I was 13, but for some, I only had a pound note. And he said, I don't have any change, you'll have to get off the bus right he, he he was a nasty one and i said i can't get off the bus it's like 11 30 at night and i i've got to get the train back to wembley from fitch and he chucked me off the bus and i'll never forget walking up that horrible long dark road at almost midnight all on my own convinced i was going to get abducted or or murdered or something and that that walk up to finchley road was was horrible horrible um and then I had to walk all the way down Finchley Road. Like I was halfway between Golders Green and Finchley Road. And then I'd missed the last Metline train. And I must have found a phone booth and I called my dad up and he came, <laughs> came and picked me up. Um, so that was, that was another memorable journey. And, um, oh yeah, so the next one after that was getting ready for the Fairport Convention concert at the Royal Festival Hall and I was seeing this guy I was on my way I was getting a bus from Wembley I got the bus from Wembley High Street Wembley Park Station then got the train um, I don't think they had the Jubilee line then so I must have got off somewhere then I got on another bus and that the reason I remember my journey there and my journey back was because that concert was the most magical one of my most magical experiences um, when I was a teenager. You know, going, going, going to experience, I don't think I'd been to many concerts, you know? And it was ethereal, the way the music rebounded around the Royal Albert Hall. And when we came out, the mist was rising off the river. And we, we went for a walk down the Thames. Maybe, the concert was at the Royal Festival Hall. Yeah, it must have been. It wasn't at the Royal Albert Hall. It was the Royal Festival Hall because we were right by the river when we came out. And I remember sitting on the wall overlooking the river and these clouds kind of evaporating off the surface of the water. And I still had the music ringing in my ears. We're going to meet on the ledge meet on the ledge and that that was a very mystical and of course we got the bus over the bridge and far away and looking down you know at London around me and still having those notes resounding through my head yeah that that was that was uh see what's interesting about bus rides is how the visual aspect of the journey merges with your emotional state at the time and that's the wonderful thing about public transport and that's what you miss when you only commute and travel somewhere by car because you don't get to enjoy the landscape you know when you're the driver you have to concentrate on the driving unless you're in an exceptionally kind of easy um, road you know unless you're traveling along an exceptionally easy route um 
but normally especially in London you know you you've got to have your wits about you all the time but when you're on a double-decker bus when you're traveling on the bus whatever you're thinking or feeling or whatever's going through your mind and what you've just experienced especially kind of cross fertilizes with the scenery around you and creates another kind of um, perceptual reality in your mind yeah Um, it's like a self perpetuating emotion it starts off as one thing then it starts to merge with you know not just the landscape around you but you might catch little snatches of conversation you know you might you know, you hear the conductor ding ding on the bell, which, you know, that's something I really miss is the conductors because um, they became part of that familiarity and also that distinctiveness, you know, of the journey. Because you get ideas. And I've got, when I'm on the bus sometimes, I have my radio on with my, you know, with my headphones. And I could, I listen to that, it's lovely. I was doing that exactly last week, it was lovely. There was a great play on Radio 4. And I was listening to it and just sort of like, sometimes people look at you and thinking, what are you laughing at? You know, they don't realise you've got an earpiece in. But um, I think the buses are good, you know. So there are some people who live in the country and it's one an hour. I don't know how they cope. But when you're, where I am, I'm quite happy that I've got the, the abundance of buses. Even during the lockdown, there was a restriction, but because it's Camberwell, you, you get probably, you know, more than usual. So it wasn't, I didn't see it as a problem. bothered me because at the time I was still smoking. So 1980, yeah I think people were still smoking at the top. Yeah. And if I, if it was too much I was going downstairs. Um, again, it would make the job of drivers better and easier and safer. Uh, safer for the people travelling if a conductor was in the bus. <laughs> As a woman, I think I would appreciate that. <laughs> a London bus, not for me. You'll not be part of the route master race. Was interesting. Once I was on the bus, come back from a gig in town, and this was a route master. And this lady came down the stairs. I think she she seemed to be spewing as she came down each step, and then straight off the bus. And the bus was actually moving. I don't know how she got on. It was she was like spewing down the stairs, and then. Straight off the bus, man. And then the bus had to um, stay stationary because they they need to get in a cleaning cr- crew to stop people slipping on the stairs. So we were stuck in London for a while. It was at night, at probably about two in the morning or something. Yeah.
The Walkie Talkies project by Michelle Baharia is supported by Arts Council England National Lottery Funding. Michelle Baharia wishes to thank Alex Zidan, Jennifer Fletcher, Kathy Waller, Disability Arts Online and many others for their support to make the Walkie Talkies. <laughs>